All right, we are starting. Sorry, that's my cell phone. We are starting 1-6, last section in Chapter 1. Woohoo! Uh, before we get to that, go ahead and try, pause the video, and see if you can answer these two warm-up questions. If you're stuck, go back to 1-5, because that's what we did the day before. Okay, so 1-6. We were talking about midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane, that's that like x, y graph thing that you guys did in algebra. Yes, so we do, uh, we do, do some coordinate plane stuff uh, in geometry, but n not a majority. But this, we will do it throughout the year. So it's important that you know how to do this stuff. By the end of the video, you should be able to develop and apply the formula for midpoint. And then we should use Pythagorean's theorem and the distance formula to find the length between or the distance between two points. So here's the breakdown of the video. I'm gonna we're gonna start off easy finding midpoints. Finding endpoints is the second part, and this is a little challenging. I think using Pythag this should say Pythagorean's theorem is pretty easy. And then for some people using the distance formula is a little bit challenging. So that's what we're gonna do in this video today. Okay, so let's start off easy. Finding midpoints. We know that midpoint is a point that's exactly in the middle. This is in your book. I think this is really confusing. I would write down that midpoint really just means the average of two points. So, for example, if I told you Joe's foot, he wears a size 8, and, uh, you know, uh, let's see, Susie wears a size 10, what's the average of their two shoe sizes? Well, you'd add them up, divided by 2, and you'd get 9. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're doing with points, except we have to do it twice. We have to do it once for the x value and once for the y value because we're going to be talking about putting it on a coordinate plane. So I'll do number one with you guys. It says find the coordinates of the midpoint of PQ, and then it tells you what the endpoints are. So P is at negative 8, 3. Okay, so negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then up 3, 1, 2, 3. So here's P. And then Q is at negative 2, 7. So negative 2, remember this is your X, this is your Y. This first letter is always your X, the second one is always your Y. So negative 2, you go over on the uh, X axis and then up 7 on your Y axis. So 3, 6, 7. Okay, so here is my and uh, here's my line segment. And you know, it, it, you don't have to graph it, honestly, guys, but I think it's good to do it because you know your midpoint should be somewhere in this vicinity. Okay, so to find it, basically we're going to take the average of your x's and you're going to find the averages of the y's. So <clears throat> what I what this means is you take one x, you add it to the other x, divided by two, and that's going to get your midpoint for the, the x coordinate. And you do the same thing for the y's. You take one of your y's, you take another one of your y's, you add them up, divide by two, and that's going to equal the midpoint for your y. Okay, so let's do that. So my y's, I'm sorry, my x's, let's do x's first. So we have negative 8 and negative 2. We're going to add those two bad boys up and divide it by 2. So negative 8 plus a negative 2 divided by 2. Well, that's negative 10 divided by 2. So we know that our x should be negative 5. And then you're going to do the same thing for the y's. So 3 plus 7, that's 10 divided by 2. So y should be 5. So your answer will be the x is negative 5, the y is positive 5. Let's see if that looks good on our graph. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bam! We're absolutely correct. I would write down these two formulas because that's going to help us for this second thing we're doing, which is finding endpoints, which is a little trickier. Okay, so finding endpoints. That's the second thing we're going to do. This one's a little bit different. This one, it gives you the midpoint. M is the midpoint of XY. X has coordinates 2, 7, and M, remember M is your midpoint, M is the midpoint, has coordinates of 6, 1. Find the coordinates of Y. So this time we already they already give us the, uh, the midpoint. We want to work backwards and find out what the other endpoint is. So let's you write down what we have. We have X is at 2, 7. Okay, positive 2, up 7, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's X. Then when they give us the midpoint, is that 6, 1? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. So this is the midpoint. Again, it's e it's nice to graph. Did I do that right? 6, 1, 2, 7, yeah. It's nice to graph because here we know this is just the midpoint. So we have to go down a little bit, and y should be somewhere in this vicinity. Okay, so let's use the formula I gave you previously. So we had the 1x point endpoint plus another x endpoint. If you add them up and divide by 2, that should equal our midpoint for the x, right? Okay, well, let's plug in what we know. We already have one x, that's 2. We don't know what the other x is. That should be for y, right? If we divide that by 2, it should equal 
the midpoint, and they give us the answer. So this is just um, an algebraic expression or equation that you should be able to solve. To get rid of this divided by 2, the first thing you're going to do is multiply both sides by 2. And that's going to get rid of that fraction, so now you have 2 plus x equals 12. Subtract 2, and you should get that your x answer should be 10. You're going to do that same thing for y. Okay, so we're going to start off all right at the beginning. We take one endpoint, we add up another endpoint, we divide it by 2, and that should get us our midpoint. Okay, so plug in what we know. We know that the endpoint is 7, right? This was our endpoint, so 7. So I'm going to erase that and put 7. Because I'm running out of room. I won't. Okay, y plus 7 divided by 2 should equal our midpoint. Our midpoint for our y was 1, so equals 1. And again, our first step both times should be to multiply by 2. So then we get rid of this fraction, and now we have y plus 7 should equal 2. Subtract 7 both sides, and we should get y equals negative 5. So our answer, our final answer, because we're going to write it as a coordinate point, is 10, negative 5. Let's see if that works. So 10, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sweet, there's why, and that looks pretty good for my picture. Boom. Okay, so this is, again, this is challenging. I want you to try it because I know this is hard. So you're going to try this one. So pause the video, and then when you're ready, continue on. Okay, the third thing we're going to do is a little bit easier, finding lengths using Pythagorean's theorem. So we're not trying to find midpoints this time. We're trying to find the distance between two points. So, um, and, and I know you guys have heard about Pythagorean's theorem before. We use this a lot in class. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But you need to know that a and b are considered the legs, and c is considered the hypotenuse. And this only works for right triangles. Okay, so let's see. So we can't have an obtuse triangle. We can't have an acute triangle. It needs to be, oh, I'm going to see this. Excuse me. Okay, sorry. It only works for right triangles, and uh, and the these two sides that touch the right angle are considered the legs, and the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So this is the hypotenuse. Okay, and you just add up, square these, and add them up, and that'll equal the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so let me show you how this can be really easy, a uh, simple way to find length of points, or length of, of legs, line segments, excuse me. Okay, so it says, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance to the nearest tenth of D to E. So we can, you do not have to do this, but um, for Pythagorean theorem, it's easy if you plot the points first. So D is at 3, 4, here's D. And E is at negative 2, negative 5. Negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Okay, cool. So once you have these plots pointed, or these points plotted, you're going to draw, connect the line. Then you're going to make your own right triangle. If I connect from here to here, that's a right triangle. Sweet. So you just draw a vertical and horizontal lines, horizontal and vertical lines. And then you get to count. Some of you guys are going to be like, well, can't you just count how long this line is? No, you can't. You have to be more accurate than that. So you can definitely count the horizontal and vertical lines. So if we count up, this is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then this one is 3, 4, 5. Okay, so now we have two side lengths. We can figure out what this one is. So you're going to do 5 squared plus 9 squared, since these are the legs. And that's going to equal our hypotenuse squared. So 5 squared is 25, 9 squared is 81, equals c squared. So then this is, what, 106 equals c squared. And then what you have to do to get rid of this squared is square root both sides. I am totally okay if you leave your answer as 106 for now. But when it asks you to the nearest tenth, that means you actually need to pop it into your calculator. And it should be like 10 something. I'm not sure what. 10.3. All right, sweet. So there's Pythagorean's theorem. The hardest part for some of you guys may be to draw this triangle. So in, which, in that case, if you do not like drawing triangles, that's fine by me. We're gonna, we can use the distance formula, and this will help us out too. Distance formula is an algebraic way of doing things. This is the distance formula right here. You basically take the x's and you subtract it and then square it. And you take the y's, you subtract it and you square it. We add those two bad boys up, and you take the square root of it. I know that looks complicated. Definitely write that formula down. We'll use it more in class tomorrow. Let's see how much time I have left. Okay, so this one, last question. It says, find FG and JK. When I give you something like this, I'm asking you to tell me the length. 
Okay, so when I give you something like this, that means tell me the length of each line. Then determine if those two line segments are congruent to each other. So do they have the same length? Okay, so if you wanted to use the distance formula, I'm going to show you how to use the distance formula for JK. And then for FG, I'm going to show you how simple it is to use Pythagorean's theorem. So JK, let's see, J is at point negative 4, 0. And K is at point negative 1, negative 3. So for distance formula, all you do is you subtract the x's. So here's an x and here's an x. Okay, so I'm going to take them and I'm going to subtract them. And then I'm going to square that answer. And I'm going to add it to the same thing for the y's. So you do the same thing for the y's. You subtract it. And make sure you're going in the same order. Notice how I picked from this first and then I went to this. you got to pick from this one first and then go to this. So the, these need to be from the same ordered pair. Okay, and then you square root it. Okay, so let's break that down. So when we have two negatives, we add it. So this is going to be negative 3 squared. And then let's see, over here we have a positive 3 squared. So 3 squared, and don't forget when you square root it. So 3 squared is 9. 3 squared is 9. Add those two bad boys up, and you get radical 18. Totally fine if you want to leave it like this. So the distance of JK is square root of 18. Now, you're more than welcome to do that with the other one. Absolutely fine if you want to use the distance form. It does not matter to me. However, let me let me show you how easy it is to do Pythagorean theorem when they ha already have it drawn for you. Just draw the right triangle. Here we have this side length is 3 and this side length is 4. So for FG, I know it's going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared. If it equals 18, then they're going to be the same thing. Okay, but 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So then I have the square root of 25. I know that this segment has to be 5. Is 5 the same thing as square root 18? No. So your final answer would be, well, one answer is going to be that FG equals 5 and JK equals radical 18. And then your final answer will be that they are not congruent to each other. All right. I know we learned a lot. You guys are awesome. Remember to go back and um, find two things that you learned this video. Ooh, and fun fact of the video, first concert I ever went to go see, Shania Twain. Bam.